So we have uh, a lot to live up to now. So the next presenter we have is uh, a friend of mine I consider, Mark Annette. He's a, a brilliant guy, uh, entrepreneur. He has a BS in physics and psychology and also an MS in biomedical engineering. Serial entrepreneur, he's been involved in a variety of interesting things from spinal implants to neurologic stimulators and heart pumps. So with that introduction, uh, Mark Annette, welcome. Hi, um, my name is Mark Annett, and I, my moonshot is a gravitational theory of quantum mechanics, it, otherwise known as the theory of everything. So what's the problem? There are actually two theories out there. There's general relativity, relativity, which deals with gravity, and there's quantum mechanics, which deals with probability. Einstein spent the initial part of his life trying to, trying to disprove uh, quantum mechanics. He's famous for saying, God does not play dice. Once he finally accepted the theory of, of quantum mechanics, he spent the rest of his life trying to reconcile them unsuccessfully. It's the ultimate scientific search. It's the thing like Stephen Hawkins has dedicated his life to. We spend billions of dollars in research in this area. Most of you probably are familiar with the Big Bang Theory, um, but not all of you know that there's problems with it. One of the problems is why is the universe so uniform in terms of the microwave background radiation? Another, and this is a recent one, is the universe is not only expanding, but it's accelerating. It's getting bigger, faster, and faster. Uh, dark matter, dark energy was proposed as a solution to this. The problem with these theories is the equations say that it should be 10 to the 121st power bigger than what we potentially observe. Um, so there's two potential things. Either dark matter, dark energy doesn't exist, or we don't understand gra gravity. And that is actually the solution that I'm proposing. Einstein said that his greatest blunder was the introduction of a cosmological constant in order to produce a static universe. The cosmological constant was a new kind of energy inherent in space-time itself and it's evenly spread out throughout the whole universe. He abandoned it when it was discovered that the universe was expanding. However, dark energy was an attempt to reintroduce it to overcome the fact that the universe is accelerating. So what will it mean if I'm correct? It'll mean that it'll usher in a new age of scientific discovery and it'll revolutionize industries, especially the semiconductor industry, which is so based on quantum mechanics. However, my real hope is to inspire a next generation of girls and boys to be audacious, to reach for that moonshot, and to eliminate from people's vocabulary the phrase, you're no Einstein, because this theory was there for Einstein, and he missed it. Um, so what is my moonshot? My moonshot is the universe is expanding as a spherical shell of antiparticles at the speed of light. And a sh spherical shell has some really interesting properties. No matter where you are within the shell, the shell exerts no gravitational force. And you can see by symmetry, the top half and the bottom half uh, won't exert a force. It's a little harder left to right, but believe me, the math is in your, any freshman physics book. Uh, the, the right, the, it's closer to the part of the shell, but there's more shell on the other side. So it doesn't exert any net gravitational force. However, Everything in the shell feels the shell. It knows it's there, and it feels it as a gravitational potential energy, which is proportional to one over the radius of the shell. So as the shell grows, the gravitational potential energy of all matter within the shell has to decrease its energy. And it decreases it by emitting a photon. That is what we know as black body radiation. So right now, Gravity and quantum mechanics at this point have just been unified. And it's because of the expansion of the shell causes everything. It produces the quantum effect uh, because instantly all matter inside the universe must be undergoing changes in their energy. The changes early on were extremely great. And as time goes on, the changes in energy get smaller and smaller to what we observe today. However, the volume of the universe has the opposite effect. Initially, the changes in volume were incredibly small, but as time goes on, you can see that the volume is accelerating. 
So what we have is we have a new kind of energy inherent in space time itself, evenly distributed throughout the whole universe, which is Einstein's cosmological constant. Uh, I said earlier that the shell is made up of antiparticles. Um, I, 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 I like this part because it makes it beautiful, but for the antiparticles, gravity is a repulsive, which if you do a Google search on repulsive gravity, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of current physicists, high-end high physicists who are actually proposing anti-gravity as the solution to, the, to why the universe is expanding. And the reason for this is for the universe to obey both quantum mechanics and relativity, it must obey a principle called CPT, which says if you take all of the antimatter in the universe and replace it, sorry, all of the matter in the universe and replace it with antimatter and reverse direction of time, the universe has to behave the same. So this is our universe. We have a direction of time from yesterday to today to tomorrow, and we see that the asteroid is approaching. If gravity is attractive for antimatter and the direction of time is the same, then the asteroid goes the same, but this violates CPT because my direction of time is the same. If I reverse the direction of time, what happens is the asteroid moves away. So we don't have the same universe. It's only if gravity is repulsive and time is reversed that we experience the same thing and CPT is met. So our universe is expanding as a spherical shell due to the repulsive force of gravity, and as it expands, photons are emitted. Not only does this conceptually make sense, but the math is there. There is a paper um, by Hadukovic, who's one of the lead physicists at CERN. Um, his paper is related to a static shell of the universe, but it really supports the theory in terms of the math of his paper. What I've done so far in terms of expanding this is I've actually taken these concepts and rolled them down um, into the atom. And I, using some research by Poole back in 1932, I'm actually able to predict 50% of the known subshell filling anomalies, um, which if anyone asks, I can go into that. But, um, I, I, however, I'm really excited to report a brand new concept. When I was preparing this presentation, I realized that the shell is not only expanding, but it's likely rotating. And if it's rotating, then it likely has poles. And when I did this, I was like, well, if there's a magnetic field, is there any evidence? And sure enough, in 2010, um, Ando and Kosenko found primordial magnetic fields may permeate the universe. So I was really excited when I, to find that pairing. So what I hope is to inspire a next generation of girls and boys to be audacious but not arrogant, to reach for that moonshot, to realize that they can be the next Einstein, the next Newton Galileo, because the world of STEM has potentially just been opened up before them and it's theirs for the taking. So I thank you, the committee, for allowing me to present my moonshot and Google for, for allowing this opportunity. So what, what are you, what are you trying to do? I, I, I understand you're doing, you know, you're doing research, you're doing some modeling around this, um, a lot of math. You're clearly way smarter than I am. What is it, what is it that you need to move forward? Well, I, I'm approaching this really, to be honest with you, because I, I have a, I'm a patent agent among other things. I'm really a philosopher um, in terms of my approach to this. Um, so, I, I, let, me, let me just go to this slide. Um, one of the things that I would like to share going forward is my process for, for the creative process that I went through so that we can understand. And there's some really good research by Yuri Allon, who's a physicist and talks about the creative process and going from here to there. I think that is what I would like to share as well as get this out there. So that people can, people who are smarter than me in terms of doing the math, I was just lucky to be able to put this together. Okay, I was lucky to solve the problem that it came to me. Um, but there's a lot of people that will be able to advance science forward now. So, so in a sense, you're, you're trying to get get the word out that you've got some answers here. Yeah. And okay, okay. So I think we can help with that. Right? Um, and, and, 
Okay, what's, what the, the difference is that, that my approach is, is everyone is trying to come up with a, a quantum theory of gravity. I did the reverse. I found the gravitational theory of quantum, which I, and quantum is actually a very special case in terms of this. So that's why I was able to do it. I was looking the other direction than everybody else. Um, the, the evidence that the shell is made out of antiparticles, besides the fact that it, it works really nicely if, because gravity is repulsive and making the shell grow, so that's kind of an automatic engine in terms of this. Um, but one of the problems that we have with our universe model right now is there is no antiparticles around. And the question is, where are they? I've stuck them in the shell. That's where they are. Okay, I, I actually have some theories um, going forward in terms of why antiparticle, antimatter is actually dissipated here in, in our universe. Um, but to the answer to the question of what potential impact does it have to everyone, I, I, I will really point to the semiconductor industry, which is based on quantum mechanics. And they use it very successfully, but have no idea why it works. So having an idea of why it works should lead to a new revolution. Beyond that, I can't, I can't do any more. Yeah. Yeah. So does this mean that you can predict the, the thickness of the shell at a moment in time? Yes. Um, I, I, actually, I, I, would, I, would, I would prefer you to the paper by Hudukovich, okay. where he actually believes that the sh thickness of the shell is based on a pion, is the thickness of a pion, which is a, a subatomic particle. I, I, I want to thank you for, um, this one's here, it's dead. I want to thank you for um, sharing uh, with us. I feel actually you explain this incredibly accessible. I'm not a particle physicist, um, but I, I kind of follow what you were saying. I think the thought process you're talking about, lateral thinking, and approaching things differently is fundamental to what everyone is doing here. Um, practical applications will probably be military and probably be you know, beyond the ken of, of a lot of people here. But it's fascinating, um, uh, and you know it, it'll be great to see if this sort of gets adopted and is considered the latest thought process and advancement in uh, in unifying physics. Thanks.